courtroom, and Alfaro was his victim. But at 16, Alfaro needed a place to call home. And that's music to the ears of predators like Gandhi, says Leslie Suggs, president of the Boston-based home for Little Wanderers that works with vulnerable youth. Kids that don't have a family makes them at risk to trade sex for food, shelter, love, care. And that disproportionate number of kids of color who come into care, the numbers are higher. A 2016 national study says most kids in the so-called sex trade are black and brown. In Massachusetts, according to another study, black youth were more than four times as likely to experience homelessness. Latino youth were three times more likely. And state data reveals that about 15% of children tagged as suspected victims of human trafficking are male. Many believe the real number is far higher. Yet the GBH News Center for Investigative Reporting found that law enforcement and social service systems often simply overlook boys as victims. Also overlooked, say experts, is the role of race and ethnicity. I think that race plays a major role in human trafficking. Jose Alfaro is 29. He moved to Boston in 2012, arriving here traumatized after years of being trafficked and traded for sex to survive. Alfaro describes his parents as extremely evangelical. And when they discovered that he was gay, they presented him with an ultimatum to either get out of the house or go to a Christian conversion therapy camp. Just past his 16th birthday, Alfaro left home. After meeting Gandhi online, he moved in with him, but soon learned that his stay would not be a free ride. He said, the best way for you to make money would be to work for me in my massage business. So if anyone asks, you have to tell them that you're 18 years old. Massage was a euphemism for prostitution. Gandhi took photos of Alfaro shirtless and posted them on Craigslist, and men responded by the dozens. Months later, Alfaro ran away after a violent assault by a client. Alfaro's experience is not unique, says Chaplay Brooks, program director for Build, a local nonprofit focused on aiding survivors of commercial sexual exploitation. Brooks says when you're kicked out of your house and community and meet someone older, you feel safe. And then all of a sudden they're like, and now you have to help me pay this rent. You need to work and McDonald's is not going to cut it. Brooks says she would like to see more arrests and prosecutions of men who exploit boys. It's paying for sex middle-aged white men paying to have sex with children. Robert Beiser, Strategic Initiatives Director for Polaris, the nation's principal anti-human trafficking policy organization, says it is a lopsided power dynamic. So you see disproportionately high rates of exploitation of black and brown victims, and then compare it to the people who are doing the exploitation, people with a significant amount of power and privilege who don't mirror the victims. There's very little definitive data about the numbers of victims in the U.S. sex trade, but there's growing research that the number of male victims is vastly underreported. A national survey found that at least a third of young people who sold their bodies are males aged 13 to 24. In Chicago, a vast majority are black and brown. How is it that the majority of all the people in sex trafficking in Chicago are people of color? Joel Fillmore, a 50-year-old therapist with a Ph.D., once was among those trafficked in Chicago. His father was black, and his mother, murdered when he was a child, was white. He says his biracial existence contributed to him being targeted for sexual and racial abuse starting at the age of three, when he moved to the home of white relatives who hated him. The color of my skin was the predominant variable in my childhood that led to the abuse, sexual, physical, and otherwise. My family created the perfect storm that anybody who showed me any sort of affection or kindness could control. So yeah, I mean, I was ripe for that sort of experience. Fillmore says at age 21, he met a pimp who got him hooked on crack and forced him into prostitution. He says he witnessed a color-coded caste system play out on the streets of Chicago in the world of male sex trafficking, where his lighter skin was an advantage. My friends who were also doing the same thing that I was doing, who were dark-skinned, were absolutely treated differently than I was, more harshly. Treated harshly by police, says Fillmore. Experts cite homophobia and systemic racism as factors that allow prostituted young men, especially if they're black or brown, to be seen as criminals rather than as potential victims, even today. 
It would take nearly a decade for Jose Alfaro to experience some form of justice. A few years after he was trafficked by Jason Gandy and raped by Gandy's client, he was flown from Boston to Texas by federal investigators to testify at his tormentor's trial. In December 2018, Gandy was sentenced to 30 years in prison on charges that included four counts of sex trafficking minors, among them 16-year-old Jose Alfaro. That wasn't the life that I had planned for myself. And I get so emotional because I had so many dreams. I had so many goals. There were so many things that I wanted to do. I worked so hard at that age. Never in a million years did I think that I'd be a prostitute. Today, Alfaro finally feels seen. He is writing a memoir is a much-in-demand hairstylist on Newberry Street in Boston, is in a stable relationship with the man he loves, and is working to keep boys out of the clutches of human traffickers.